All right. Well, hopefully everybody's had a Merry Christmas and getting ready for a Happy New Year. But anyway, a little bit of progress on these. Now, um, I've already shown, I think I put out the videos showing turning this arbor. I've not turned the arbor for the smaller, or for the second probe. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do there yet. I'm kind of leaving my options open there. I did tap it for... Um, half 13 so we can build an arbor for there of whatever size we we deem necessary I've I'm not sure what I'm doing I may change change tax a little bit and we showed the video about turning the bore and um, drilling and tapping the adjustment screws in the in the nose of these and and turning the noses of course so I've gone ahead and got my circuit boards done but we've got our balls all situated in there and um, we went ahead, and on these other two probes, we've gone ahead and put our siliconed our um, circuit board in place. And what we've got is just on either side of each adjustment screw on the other side, there's a little dab of silicone. So we've got six blobs of silicone going around, and then we seat this in. So our circuit board sits just a little bit off of the base of that to adjust the center up the probe to zero it out why we can adjust those screws and that silicone will hold that circuit board in place yet give it just enough movement to where we can adjust the uh, probe tips so anyway that's the way they look and the way the contacts set in I've gone ahead and turned the the contact tips and the the plastic insert that goes in the middle we've got two of those of course and it's a standard turning job they're uh, turned to diameter and those dimensions are in the in the article and then it's tap 1024 which is a probe size this is an extra probe that I had already cut for the other uh, touch probe that I previously built I'm going to change this touch probe I'm going to change this touch probe style and I'll go over that in just a minute but the way these sit in there is they sit right down in place like that and when your probe comes in contact any movement will break the circuit and so we've got a complete circuit in this situation with the exception of we've got power in, on one side and ground on the other. And um, then it completes the circuit with the probes in place. Anytime contact's made in any direction, why, it'll break that circuit and open up the, uh, open up the circuit. So that's the way the probe actually works. And just any, any direction at all or up, why, it'll break the circuit at some point in there. Um, and then a resistor and the LED run across between those two contacts. And, and um, they should light when the circuit is broken here. That power should go through that LED and resistor. And it should light that resistor. I'm going to play with that a little bit because on my current probes, they do not work. So I'm not sure if it's just um, because they're not going to work with my setup in Mach 3 or if I've got something wired wrong. I may very well have those LED and, and uh, resistor reversed. That's the way they go together. So we've got both of those, and um, what will happen is this will be loctited in place. I still have to drill the body for both the uh, power cable to go in, or the probe cable, and then the LED. If, if I get an LED to work, I will drill it for an LED. And this arbor is the one for the TTS style system, and it goes in place. I drilled a quarter 20 hole here, and what I'm going to do is, that is strictly to put a little stud in a, I think it's a three quarter inch plastic ball knob I've got on there. The only reason for having that in there is when I, um, when we adjust the probe tip to uh, make sure it's concentric, why in my mill, the way it's set up, why I'm having to turn this whole probe body and I'm working against the belts in the motor. There's no, there's no um, spindle release on there to allow it to freewheel. So it's kind of tough to turn, so I just put a little hole in there. I can put a knob on so I can grab a hold of it and adjust it. Um, and that will make sure that I don't start it with that in there. Otherwise, it'll probably beat the crap out of my knuckles. So something I didn't need, but I thought while I'm doing, we'll go ahead and add it. Plus, it gave me a reference point for, for where I wanted. I'll set that up so it comes out the uh, right-hand side of the mill in normal setup and it'll make it easier to index it up when I when I put it back into the mill every time it'll be the same way. Found a nice flexible three millimeter cable it's uh, an IXCC it's off of Amazon I'll put the link below and it was a 10 footer so I 
cut it to the appropriate length. This one's, oh, this one's probably a three and a half foot is all I needed for on the mill. And the rest I saved for that other probe and I'll cut it to whatever length. It seems to be a pretty nice cable. So I've went ahead and already stripped the ends. We've got the shielding pulled back off of them. And of course, these are a shielded cable, which is one of the supposed advantages of using it in this manner. Um, went ahead and stripped those off. I've had them hooked up to the ohm meter so I know where my where my contacts are, which contacts I'm using. The white is the tip, the center collar is the red. So I've got those marked down when I go to wire them. We can do that. What I plan to do for probe tips is 1024 socket head cap screws and we'll, they of course will thread right into our body, which is what it's threaded for. I'm going to go ahead and set it up in the lathe and drill those to accept these C2 tungsten carbides, they're six inch pieces, and this I believe is uh, two millimeter is what I got. And what I'm going to do with this carbide is I'm going to cut it into four different pieces. That'll give me about an inch and a half long probe, which is these are. I'm going to go ahead and drill the socket head cap screws to accept that. We'll epoxy them in place on the one end. On the other end, I'm going to put a three millimeter ball. I'll set up a little jig so that I can put them on the end, and I'm just going to solder those into place. It's the is the plan. So that's the way we're going to make our probe tips. We'll uh, we'll show that when we get that far. Well, we're going to go ahead and see if we can't assemble this one. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the rest of this body and put the nose cap on. Went ahead and drilled a hole here on the side for our hose to, or for our power cable to come in. Did a lot of playing around hooking up LEDs with my mill configuration. An LED will not light. I can make the LED light, but then Mach 3 won't respond to the touch probe. And without the LEDs on there, or with them with a enough resistor for it to trip the um, trip Mach 3 in the in the probing software, why it won't light the LED on the side. So I'm just going to omit the LED. So I went ahead, ran my cable through there. Then our nose cap is going to sit on here just like this. And let's go ahead and wipe it out with a little bit of acetone, and we can blue Loctite that in place. So we'll just clean that up a little bit. A little bit of blue Loctite. Well, that's more than a little bit, but put that on there. Gonna be plenty tight for that. So there's our uh, that part of it. Our probe will set down in there. We have to make sure we have clearance. Well, I don't know if I didn't shoot all of the video that I wanted or if I misplaced part of it, exactly what the deal is, but I wanted to give you a kind of a final assembly, and I wanted to tell you about a couple of mistakes I made and what I did to correct them. Um, earlier I showed this with uh, starting to do the assembly, starting to run the cables inside, or the cabling inside, and what I ended up and did is I epoxied the cable on the inside, but I had some problems with the circuit boards holding onto the bottom, and it ended up the problem was I didn't have enough spring tension. The spring that goes in between, and we'll show you on this one. So consequently, when I tried to level it with the three adjustment screws on the bottom, why it um, 
it wouldn't adjust. It was too sensitive and didn't really want to hold it in position. So when I tried to do adjustment screws with that little spring tension, it really wasn't moving the probe back to center where I wanted it. So I ended up and I broke loose the, the silicone that retained it. I think twice I had to go back and re-glue the, the first circuit board until I figured out what the problem was. It was the circuit board in the, in the actual probe that I'm using. So, and I didn't show final assembly. So this is the, the other circuit board. And I've actually marked this just with a Sharpie to show where the, uh, which set of alignment pins I wanted. So the things to watch out for on this is when you solder your balls onto the circuit board, make sure that they're seated completely in the hole and make sure that spacing is right. The, that was one of the other problems I had on the circuit board was the probe was wanting to stick between one pair of the balls. And I think it was probably just off center a little bit. I didn't have it seated all the way into the, into the hole for it. So it ended up, I just replaced it. I turned three of these boards. So I just used the, the two good ones and uh, had to replace the one. So I've marked where this goes with Sharpie because I've already indexed this one up to zero it fairly closely. But our probe sits down into the three uh, sets of balls, the six balls, so that centers it. Then our spring goes in there, and this is a cut down spring that I got. It came from the local hardware store spring assortment. And in the top I've cut a recess to keep that spring relatively well centered. Once that goes on there, you screw it down, that's uh, that's all that's necessary for the for the probe to work. So it works fine. Now this is the one that I've actually shown the assembly on. I've uh, put a little stub handle on here with a little ball and then I've zip tied it. What that's doing is it's actually act working as a strain relief for the cable which I've epoxied on the inside of this body and it also gives me a index point so I put the probe into the into the spindle the same way. So that takes care of any variation in how it's going to pick up the probe tip. Even if we're off a little bit, that will help center. This is a setup. It works well. Um, I've already, I show the probe being tested in the, at the end of this video if I haven't already showed it. But anyway, that's the end result. When I had it apart, I went back and, and sandblasted it and powder coated the body. So that's why we've got the, the body. I said I hadn't really decided what I was going to do with this probe. And uh, what I think is going to happen is I think I'm going to convert it into a touch probe like this for to set my tool heights and to check for tool breakage. Um, so I'll just unscrew this, unscrew this uh, probe tip, set it aside, and I'll build probably a little brass cut for that. It's standard turning, same same kind of setup. Um, so I'm not going to videotape that. I'm sure we'll see it in use. What I am going to build for it is probably a little mount that will hook into a T-slot on the mill table so that I can, we'll use this as an example, so I can set it on the um, end of the table, just bolt it down into a T-slot. I've got a consistent height and everything. So both to probe my lengths of, of tools and to, during a, during a program run, if I want to check for tool breakage, why well, I can program right in to, to move over the top and touch off to make sure. So if we've got the if we've got to touch off at the proper height, why we know our tool's okay. Otherwise, if there's no, if it doesn't touch off to the right height, why then it'll stop the program and we'll have to check because we probably got a problem. So this will get mounted this way when it's all assembled. We'll take that probe out, put a pad on top, and that'll be that um, that portion of it. I put a short cable on here for where I think I want to mount it on the table, and I'm going to add a jack with just an extension cord type of thing or an extension back to the probing software in the control panel. Uh, where I can plug this in right near where my uh, digital readout mounts on the mill. The, I'm going to run one more video on this series, and it's going to show how I made these probe tips uh, and the tooling I made to, to set them up. I made a little fixture to be able to hold everything in alignment while we, while we solder on the, the little balls on the end. So I've already zeroed it out. When you, when you set them up in the mill, why they're, they're adjusted on these screws, and when you adjust one, why it'll move the probe tip you know, in the proper direction. Uh, I mounted the dial indicator on the, on the table. We touch off right on the probe and make sure we're, we're as concentric as, as we can be or as we want to be when we rotate this around in the, in the spindle. So that's all there is to it. Pretty simple project. Other than a couple little baubles along the way, why it's come out real well, I'm real happy with it. So. Okay, so hopefully you can see this Mach 3 screen. We've got it opened up. I got quite a bit of glare, and I'm not sure I'm getting a rugged screenshot of that, but 
I'm not going to put this in the mill. We'll have table motion as we try this, but we'll uh, just manually trip it for it to do what it's supposed to do. My connection is quite simply plugs in right there. And if we go to our offsets and probing screen here, do a reset. When we make contact with this, even in this position, we should see this contact light light up right here. And we do. So that trips it. Yeah, that's a pretty light contact. That's lighter than I had before. Anyway, that's the setup for it. That's all there is to it. Now as we probe with it, of course it'll set in the mill spindle just like this. Get this cord out of the way. And I've got to do some work to this probe screen because we'll, uh, I'll change the, the parameters of it a little bit. I'll have to adjust it for an eighth inch ball on the end. And um, I'll make some other changes that I'm not really sure I like about this screen. This is, as I said before, this is the Haas probing screen and it works fine. But um, we can probe from any of the corners we want, X, Y, uh, plus or minus. Um, this is a downward this will probe the center of a hole, and this will probe the outer surfaces or the outer perimeter of a uh, of a uh, oh, square piece is what they're showing. All the way to work on a round. You enter the approximate part diameter. If you're going to do the outside, you want to be a little bit bigger and allow it to come in on it. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to babble about it here. If we do a, well, it doesn't matter which way we do. Let's do a uh, center hole here. We're going to probe trip there, goes the other direction, trip there, and there's y-axis, and we've centered ourselves. Now see, in this particular screen set here, I'm going to change that so that it probably uh, retracts out of the hole and then comes back to, it comes back to center, but we're going to retract out of the hole. Um, I notice doing corners or doing edges, it comes in, then it comes straight up. I want to do a retract up and then... Uh, then come back over the corner is what I'm going to do. Same way with probing outside, we're going to make it make it do what it's supposed to do and and um, or make it do what we want it to do. But anyway, the uh, the probe works fine. Z-axis probing. As we start down, it contacts, and there's where it it stops. And I'll uh, I'll amend that G-code so we do a retract back up. I believe I'll do a retract. I want to make sure that it it zeroes first and then does a retract back above whatever that distance is. So this screen set does need a little bit of work. The more I play with it, the more I find there's things that I do want to change in it. But it's a good starting point. And anyway, great little project. So once I get this blued up and uh, zero it out and all that type of thing, why? Then we'll come back and we'll do a little final review of it and see if it's going to work. But all in all, I'm real happy with that. Low investment, fun project, doesn't take anything except time, and it's not that precision to build. So anyway, hopefully you found something useful here that you can use in your own shop. If you haven't already, you might want to hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video, and comments, suggestions, complaints, whatever they may be, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.